Greetings and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team Battle Report. Today we're, well, showing off the new Critical Ops, where I am using the Imperial Navy Breaches and Charles is using the Vitiates. Hello. But before we get into things, please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let us know what you thought of this battle report. Do you like it? Who'd like to see that kind of stuff? And remember, I've got a Discord. You can check out the episode description below for free, as well as a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. But yeah, we're back on Octarius for this kill zone. Once again, uh, uh, assumingly, for some reason, the Navy are fighting the Novitiates over a disagreement. A disagreement I'll let you imagine yourself. Who has the better armor? Who's the better kill team? That kind of stuff. So for the mission, we are playing deployment free flank. So I'll bring that up here. Flank. And then for the mission, we are playing loot. So it's like loot and salvage. As you can see, we've got six objectives. All can be looted each up to three times. And you can only score four, prim four victory points from the primary. Instead of being within the inner circle, you just have to be within the objective. And for the terrain, it's Octarius. These two vantage points are blocked off, so you can't climb up. And then no doors, because that's what Octarius doesn't come with. And then you've got scramble, 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 heavy vantage, heavy vantage with you know, light cover on top. And that's it. So, Charles, you're using the Novitiates, aren't you? Yes. Uh, so we've got um, the Eviscerator, the Whip, uh, the Duelist. The Duelist has got a Crack Grenade. Uh, the Leader's got the Plus Pistol Power Sword combo. Uh, we've got one flamer, we've got the Dialogus? Mainly the mace lady. The, the one with the mace, she's got a frag grenade, um, the Patronus for the extra faith points, the, the CP giver, uh, the crossbow, she's got an icon of faith. Yep. Oh, the, the leader's got an auto chastiser, she can yep. reroll ones. Uh, icon of faith on the crossbow, so you can get one free faith act, and then another flamer. And we're all concealed because. Yeah, uh, even though John can shoot at infinite range, it's only one-two damage, it's best not to get shot because he does have a plasma gun. Yes. Uh, for my kill team, I've gone with all the specialists. My leader has a power sword and uh, auto boat pistol. I mean, auto pistol, sorry. I've not taken the cat, I've taken the skull, and I've taken two normal breaches. I have also taken ten stims, so ten wounds, basically, and I've put on everyone apart from the shotgun, uh, the guy with the shield, the Endurant, and also I haven't put it on the skull because the skull can't, can't take have, it. Yeah. So everyone has a minimum of eight wounds with a four-up save. Uh, so now we'll do scouting. So I was the attacker, Charles the Defender. So yeah. one is barricade that can go on a vantage point. Yeah. Two is uh, change, change order. order, three is dash. Cool, I'm ready. Three, uh, yeah. two, one. One. Oh, oh, we've oh. both picked Fortify. I um, so you get to do yours first? Uh, yes, because Defender does this first. Yep. Uh, John made me Defender. Yes. Get a base in there. Yep. There you go, John. You All can, right. You so... can now place your barricade. Yes. I had a feeling you might put one there. So what I may do is... Cool. So we both put our extra barricades there. Yeah. All right. Uh, right. So you, uh, well, you you were the attacker, and it was a tie. So you have initiative. I will let um, you go first, Charles. We both gain an extra CP, so we're both up to four CP. Yes, we are now on four command points. So we'll get into reason... the start of the turning point. And remember, yeah. this is a patron requested battle report. I've just been delayed, so we'll get into it. Good luck, Charles. Your first. Good luck. Well, uh, thing. So, so um, strategic. Employees. Yes, so we're both on four command points now. Well, I'm not doing any strategic ploys. Um... So I will give attack order to my leader for free because I have to nominate one at the start of the first turning point. So I can either do attack order, or defense defend. order for free while my leader yeah. is alive, and I'm not going to do any strategic ploys. Yeah. Uh, uh, I could put it down, but hmm. why? Uh, I have my three faith points. Yes, you get free. Then yeah. we go to tack ops. Anything to reveal for tack ops? Uh, we're going to reveal. Um, Securities protect assets. So if I incapacitate two or more people who are on an objective, yep. I score one. I have to do that twice. Any from you, John? Nothing from me. Uh, and then I've got two more that I can't reveal yet. All right. So then your first activation. Good luck. Good luck. So we're just going to activate the Pratron, uh, Pronatus. Pronatus. Uh, she's basically just going to leap the wall um, to here. She's going to perform the mission action for free, and then she's going to jiggle her cup around and generate me two more faith points. So you're on one victory point and six faith points. Uh, yes. Cool. Your first operatives. All right, so I'm going to activate my uh, Breacher Breachy. 
the guy who can cut through walls, now he's not on Into the Dark. So I'll activate the hutch, hatch cutter so he can uh, move. So he'll move first. I'll just measure this out. So oddly, he's going to move to this door, right? And cut a hole in where the door should be. And he's going to cut it open. So I place this marker, our breach point, anywhere within black of this operative and black of the terrain reacher, no more than black thick. Friendly operatives can move through that part of the room as if it's not there. So long as they don't finish their move. Inside the terrain, yeah. So I'll place that there. We're going to activate the whip. Yep. Um, she is going to whip the chainsaw. So you get plus uh, one right APL. Here, give a plus one APL and the extra two inches of move. And then she's just going to move under here. I'm going to activate my breaches. Okay. So I'm going to use my once per turning point breach and clear ability. So when a friendly Imperial Navy operative is activated, you can select this ability. Select one other Imperial Navy within blue of that operative. Until the end of the turning point, you have a GA of two. And when that activation ends, you must select um, the second operative to fulfill. So I'm going to activate this breacher and then select the other normal breacher who's GA2 anyway, because it says you can't, it doesn't have a stipulation that you can't. And then uh, I'm going to use my tactical ploy. I'm using breach and clear on operatives that are GA2 anyway, because it says you can't, it doesn't say you can't. So why are you doing that? You'll see. So I have a, a tactical ploy which is overwhelm target. So when you use the breach and clear ability, select one of those Imperial, Imperial operatives, they get plus one APL. Right, I see. So I'm going to select this guy. He is going to dash to there and then move onto the point, move and dash and claim it. Yep. Yeah. That goes down to two. Tuck him in, in there. And then the other guy is just going to move, move up. So I go down to three command points. Yeah. Really weird, it works on guys who already have GA2, but whatever. Well, it, it's so you can select anyone, and yep. it, technically, you should... It's, it's one of those odd ones where it's, a, it's an ability they've given you. Um, it should just be, like, the breach and... The, the, tack, the, the ploy should just be when you select a guy to yes. activate. Gain, as long as he's within blue of another optive, gain an action point. Oh, no, so it only works during Blitz. I mean, it, during with the... Well, no, that's what I mean, yeah. is they gave you this weird ability that lets you GA2 anybody. But they didn't think, why would you do it on people that already have GA2? Yeah. Anyway, it's your turn, Charles. It's, it's just one of those odd ones that they built into the team for some reason. Uh, so we're just going to activate the Duelist. Yep. She's, as you can go, three to there, three behind there, and then... Claim it. Claim the point. Cool. I am going to activate my comms man, who isn't called the comms man. He is called the surveyor. So the surveyor is going to give plus one APL to the axe jack and then just pass. Your turn. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we're going to activate the flamer on this side. Yep. Um, we're just going to move around to here and then dash into the uh, cool. cover there. All right, I will activate the melter gunner who will just move and dash to there. The comms is just going to move across and pass plus one APL to the mace. Yep, I'll activate the Endurant. He is going to move and traverse behind this barricade. And then just... Claim it. Claim it. Your turn. Uh, so, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll activate the mace. Uh, Windu. <laughs> mace Windu, yeah. She's going to... Dash. Dash. Scramble. Traver, uh, scramble over the pile over there. Yep. She should be anywhere within an inch. Yep. Um, and claim it. And then claim it with her third AP. I'll activate my axe jack who will scramble, pop, and then dash and dash to there. Hmm. Your turn. So that's down to two. Actually, he'll move there. It's tucked in. Uh, we're just going to move the... Condemner round. Yep. Into here. I activate the Grenadier, who is going to move and dash to here. With a move and a dash, she's going to get herself up behind the building. Yep. My and leader done. is going to move and dash to there and pass. Actually, Two. my leader will move and dash around here. So tucked in, but just under the building. Right. We're just going to move this flamer up behind the pile and pass. Cool. Just gonna move to here. Mm hmm. And a skull. Uh, your turn. So, yeah, just gonna move and dash around into there. Waste my extra APL. Yeah, the plasma's gonna move and dash. Feels like he was on the wrong side of the battlefield. Yep. 
Uh, You've got anyone I have else? No Overwatch at the moment. And then it's going kind to of move and dash to here. Cool. All right. Uh, so that's the end of the round. End of the turning um, point. I get free primary. I got three primary. Yep. And we just ready everyone. Yep. All right. So then we roll for priority for turning point two. Yes. I have a five. I need a six. No. Oh, I will take initiative. I get three more faith points. I go to four command points. You're on five. Yeah. I'll use attack order. Mm -hmm. So it's basically rerolled. You put a marker down for your attack order. And as long as both you and the target are within blue, is it? Or as long as the shooter or the attacker is within blue. Of both attack. I thought the attacker and the... No, just the attacker. Yeah. Yep, I'll put it there, where that number two is. Uh, so that's for free. Anything from you? Uh, no strategic ploys from me, uh, because they either require me to be engaged or don't really do much for me. Oh, do I do the pistol one just in case? Um, I got five. Yeah, actually, I will spend one for infinite range pistols. I'll spend a command point, so I go down to free to do brace for impact. So unless I have performed a charge, fall back, or normal move action, uh, I subtract one damage from your attacks to a minimum of two. Anything from you? No. Then, yeah, I'll spend a command point for close assault. So if I attack you while within blue and I have two or more successes, I can change one of my misses to a hit. Yep. Uh, none for me. All right. So then we go any first. Tack, oh, tack, tack, uh, ops, tack ops. Yes. Need to reveal. Actually, there are now. All right, so I'll reveal first. So I will reveal Eliminate Guards. So you can reveal this tack up in the, at any turning point. Once you do, at the end of each target reveal step, select an objective marker on the center line or within your opponent's territory to select one enemy operative within white of it to be the guard for that turning point. If I incapacitate them, I get a victory point. If I do it again, I uh, get another, but I don't really, I don't nominate now. I do it after we've revealed all our attack ops because it's at the end of the target reveal step. Really? Yeah. At the end of each target reveal step, I get to uh, nominate. Uh, right, yeah. So you, you, you reve you've revealed it. It's yep. not until the end of the step you do it. Uh, well, I'll reveal central control. Uh, nothing from me. And I'll reveal secure center line. All right. Uh, so at the end of the target reveal step, I'll pick your guy, your lady with the crack. Yep, uh, the frag grenade. The Fra crack is on the duelist. Oh, that's a crack. No, that's a that's the frag. The oh, crack is on the duelist. Okay. Uh, well, I will activate uh, this guy, and I'll breach and clear with him. Oh yeah. So I'll dash first. Right. For one AP. Then I will do its boost for one for one action point, and land here. So you can land anywhere. So I can land within black, single straight line with unlimited move, and you have to finish within black at that point. Yeah. So I could deviate a bit, but I'll basically land here. Then I will activate uh, the Void Jammer, who will, I mean, doesn't even, will move just to space out in case it gets fragged. Oh no, it'll stay where it is, because otherwise if I move out, I'm out of range of my attack order. So first it will pop uh, the skull. So the skull dies. And then everyone within white of it gets hit by an EMP grenade, which is two free, lethal, lethal your armor save. Yeah, you don't even need to be able to see the death yep. skull. The only thing is you can't do it during turning point one. Yeah. So I'll nominate your Pegatus first. You perform a shoot action with this weapon. Yes. So that's why I have to put the attack you order. Within white for any narrow scope. Do you still not need to be able to see the target? No, you just do it from within there. But the thing is for re-rolls, so that's why I've put the attack. Yeah, which here. is it's stupid. You yeah. shouldn't be able to get re-rolls from you it. You should, and you should still need to be able to see the target of where the skull oh, yes. is. Uh, but um, I will hit your pegatus first. So hitting on freeze. Uh, so I've got two crits because your armor save is four up and a hit, and I'll re-roll the one because of my attack order. Uh, so three crits and a save, a normal success. So you get three four up armor saves. Uh, one crit and two fails, so I take a crit and uh, sorry, two crits and a hit. So that's three, six, eight. Which is dead. Yep. Then your Pegatus, I'm uh, not your Pegatus, your sniper. Uh, three crits, uh, oh, three crits and a hit, so three four ups. Um, so you uh, save one. Yeah. Um, so if you if you spend a CP, I mean so, if you spend a fate point 
And then, well, basically you need to block a crit to live. No, you need no, to block No, I need two. to block at least two crits to live, or more. Oh, no, wait, if you change that to a crit, you live. Because if you block the hit and the crit, you just take six damage. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out what's the best way I can... Um... I think it's only two for defensively crits. It's three for offensive crits. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to spend one point to on re-roll re one of the dice. So you do get a save. a save. So that blocks I'll spend, a crit. Uh, uh, we might as well spend two faith points to turn the crit, uh, the, 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 uh, the successful save into a crit save. Yep, so you block two crits. And then, then. I'll spend a CP as well to re-roll the last failed. No, you, you rolled a success and... No, so I had, t I had one success and two fails. Yes. Right. You re-rolled one with the... I re-rolled one into a success and I still have a fail. You and... turn a success into a crit save. Oh. So I turn the success to a crit save. Yep. I can turn a failed save to a normal save. So I'm spending the CP to re-roll the last yes. save. Yes, yep. Into oh, a save. So I get two saves and a crit save, so I only take a single crit. Uh, do you want to block both crits? Uh, yeah, yeah, so you block both... No, no, no. You block two crits. No, because these are how much damage each? So you've got two crit... Three, six, nine... Uh, so two, and then these are all three. So if you block two crits, you will take five damage. Oh, because that's a crit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, four, right, yeah. I thought you had two normals. So yep. yeah, so we'll block two crits. So you take uh, five damage, so you've got two wounds left. Yeah. I'll give you a wound thingy. So this is the weird thing. So people have been ruling it, because it's, it's not blast, but it's within white. So because of the FAQ, anything within... They FAQ blasts, so they don't provide cover. But I would still say, because the shooting attack... Even though it's coming from there... Well, the whole... If you're doing that, then he should have to see the yeah, target yeah, yeah. to be able to shoot. So you get to retain um, a dice because techni cover. Actually, technically, if I blinding lighted, you couldn't shoot because he's making the shooting attack and he's not within white. Oh, no, he's too close because he's still within white. But, but is he? Yes. Because no, he's the shooting model, though, making the shoot attack. Yes. Yeah, this is... Again, this is a problem with how they've worded this. So uh, your Pronatus... Is two crits and a hit. And I, uh, Three crits, because your armor save is four up. Okay. Uh, so four crits. But you are in cover, so you get to retain one, yeah. and then you get two four-ups. Um, yeah, I'll retain one. Um, uh, so I've got two saves, which if I save both of them, it won't... If it would block one crit, and that would do nine. Um, yes. I need to... You need to block two crits. Yeah, I need to block two crits, so I need to... Reroll, so I spend one faith point. So well, didn't you want to spend a command point there? Well, no, because I can. Uh, if this rolls a save, oh, I see. Yes. I can turn one of these into a crit save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. So you do. So I've got three saves. Yes. So I can spend two points to turn one of these into a crit save, and you'll block two crits block and two take crits four. Take, uh, take, take six, six damage. damage. Yeah. So you got one wound left. Yeah. And that's that's my skull done. Uh, well, actually, then my guy needs to move, so then he'll just move there. And that's him done. Skull dies. Yep. So you count as killing it if you have anything related to that. Uh, yes, because you're within range of an objective marker. So I get a point on, a half a point on protect assets. Oh, do you? Well, it's each time an operative... At the end turn, if two or more enemy operatives are incapacitated while within white of an objective marker... Yes, you are right, yeah. we're incapacitated. Yep. So you get a, a well, no, one... I, get, I got half of a yeah. point so far. Uh, your turn. My turn. Um, well, they're currently safe because you're not going to get anyone else to shoot them yet. Yes. Um, do I go and chainsaw you in the face? Um, do I run around there and bop you with a stick? So you're immune to blast, no splash. Immune to splash, splash. and I get to reroll one defense dice against blast. Yeah. And but blast still torrent. can hurt you, so I'd only get those two. Yeah, it would get my comms and my plasma. Yeah. There's nobody else there. My leader is, but he's too he's, far away. Yeah. Um, he's hiding in the corner. I'm safe. I'm safe. Now we're gonna go with the eviscerator. Yep. She's gonna switch to engage. Yes. Um, and then she's gonna charge. The uh, guy where the other barricade is. Yep. Charge here, because we're in range. Um, do you get rerolls when you charge? Uh, I think yes. you do, because you hit on fours or something, right? Uh, so the eviscerator, yeah. She when she char when she charges, I believe she gets the reroll. 
Yes. Uh, first time it performs a fight action each of its activations, it can cool. uh, re-roll any or all its attack dice. Cool. So it's just actually when the first fight you do. So you can't do uh, it if I charge you again and fight? Uh, no, it's, it's the first time it performs a fight action each of its activations. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Once per turning um, point, basically. So yeah. you get to swing with four dice hitting on fours with Relentless, uh, basically? Uh, yeah, and Brutal and Reap, but Reap doesn't matter. Reap's the best keyword. Reap is the worst keyword in the universe. Uh, yeah, so on fours with rerolls. Uh, so you get a crit and a hit. Crit and a hit, two misses, which we reroll into another hit. So um, I hit on threes, a uh, four, sorry. Hitting on fours, three, four damage. So you miss everything. And I'll die. Uh, so we just kill you. Yeah, because you're five, six, right? I'm five, six, yes. Yeah, so, so even go. with my minus one damage, it doesn't do yeah. anything. Um, so we kill you, um, and that's all she can do. Um, she can't trigger the thing, but that does score me protect assets. Yes, so you get one that's protect. the second yep. thing on an objective. <sighs> okay, so I activate my axe, Jack. Mm -hmm. He's going to wade his way in. So it's two AP. So my axe, Jack, who doesn't have a power weapon, who does have a, I think it's a power axe now, I don't know. They changed the name. Uh, so he's going to do wade in. So two action points, he can do a free charge and then fight action, but it's basically doing charge and fight. Yeah, it should just be like perform a charge and then a fight action. So he'll just wade his way over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so this triggers his emboldened. So if he performs a charge action until the end of the turning point, while he's emboldened, he gets a five up DPR. So I've got four attacks hitting on freeze with lethal five up and no rerolls. Uh, so, three hits and a crit. Yep. And I've got four attacks as well, hitting on threes. Yes. Uh, oh, I get two hits um, and two misses. Um, you're, what's your, you're four six, aren't you? Yes. So, you crit me. I kill you in two hits. You kill me in two hits, yeah. I get one hit, you can parry my other hit. Even if I get another one... You just have to kill me in two. Yep. Yeah, there's no point in me spending anything on it. So you, I hit you for six, and then you hit me I for five. I hit you five. for five. So I kill you. Kill me. So I get five DPR rolls, so damage uh, oh, uh, rolls. Yes, and then um, when you do kill me, I'll spend a CP for yep. glorious martyrdom. To get D3 faith um, points. You suffer a mortal wound, and I gain D3 faith points. Cool. Which, come on, be a thing. Three. You get three. So. so you're now on... Six. Cool. So I'll do my six fail no pain rolls. Well, fail them all. You fail them all, so you oh, take yeah. six damage. So because he's got stims, he's got two wounds left. Uh, yeah. Your turn, so that uh, lady is she dead. She is dead, but she did. Oh, I do score a point for um, Assassinate Guard, because I killed yes, her. Yes, yeah. Yep. Your turn. Uh, so what we're going to do is we will activate our leader. Yes. Uh, she's going to do the mission action first. Yep. Uh, and because she's done the mission action, she can then activate and uh, once she finishes her activation she can activate a friendly model within uh blue uh red okay visible and within red and that model can, so i'm going to choose the duelist yep that model can then go afterwards cool so what would so, your leader like to do next uh so she's done one which is to pop pop the point um i think we're just gonna Move this way slightly, and then she's done. So then we're going to activate the duelist. Oh, you know, if you want, you could switch to engage and shoot from that pillar. Because your leader was touching this one, so if you draw the cover line through there, you could just shoot me anyway. But you would be engaged, and I still have a plasma and melt. Yeah, no, she's just going to move around here. Yep. Um, then we're going to activate the duelist. The duelist yep. has got six inches of move, which is going to get her. Round into here. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, wood, yep. And then she is going to... Claim it. Claim that point. Uh, I will activate my comms. He will give plus one APL to the plasma. Mm -hmm. And then just move around. Your turn. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to activate my... So you're giving plus one APL to your plasma. You can do that, that, and that. Um, we're going to activate my comm. Yep. 
who is going to give plus one APL to the Flamer. Yep. And uh, I'm going to draw over there at the moment. Uh, it's just going to move round up to. Uh, okay. Going to move round that side. Ooh. She's got six inches, so she's got plenty of move to get from there to there. Yep. Get to there. So I will activate my Endurant, who will pop this. Yep. And then he'll just move to there. Move to the side of the building. Nice. Uh, we're going to activate the Flamer. Yep. I'm uh, going to switch to engage with yep. the Flamer. Uh, they are also. They're going to. Hop over the uh, thing. Um, stay outside of an inch of you. Yep. Um, we're going to pop the point because we have plus one APL. Yes. Because I'm now three and you're already two. Yep. Uh, so that gives me that. And then we're going to incinerate your guy with the axe. Cool. Uh, so it should be five dice on twos, I believe. Yes, Do two, three. three. Do you want to spend a command point to make it three, four? Uh, I don't need to, no, because he'll go down to three. Uh, oh no, he's done a no charge doesn't count as removing your damage mitigation. It does. I thought it was dash move. Or no, something. no, it's move charge, move charge or fall back. All right, so oh, it's dash is the one that doesn't. Yes. Uh, do I need to um, increase my damage on the flame? I don't think so because it's five dice on twos. Uh, it's two three. No, we're not going to, because I don't need to. So, five dice on twos. Yep. Well, that's three hits. Um, we might as well spend one faith point. We'll, re yeah, we'll spend a faith point to... Faith point. We'll spend two faith points and reroll cool. two ones. Yep. Just to make sure, basically. So, four, four hits. hits. So... Uh, three, four Palmer saves with the reroll. So I save all of those. So you take two damage still. And then I've got two five up filner pains. Yeah. Which nope. fail both. So he dies. Because yep. <laughs> he only had two left. Uh, I'm cursed with DPR rolls. Even when I was yeah. playing my Gellapox, they never were, never passed any. Yeah. Uh, so she's done. So I'll switch this guy to engage, this normal guy. He's the yep. only normal breacher left. Are you gonna charge, are you? Yeah, yeah, he's charging. Not yep. gonna fight. So I should be within white of With black of both. Black of both. Now, do I want to do that? Because I think that keeps you alive. I mean, yeah, so no, please charge. Just charge to there. Okay. Let's just activate the uh, Patronus. Yep. She's going to use her free mission action to pop the point. Yep. Um, she's going to use her chalice to give me three more fate points. Yep. Putting me back up to seven. Um, and then she's still got one action point left. Does she want to move anywhere? No one's really going to actually. No, she's going to stay where she is. Oh, hang on. No, she can. Uh, I can, when she activates, actually spend um, two faith points. So, so when she activates, I spend two faith points. Okay. And she can regenerate um, D3 lost wounds. Yep. So she gets D3 wounds back. Three, three wounds back. So she goes up to four. Yep. Uh, so she's on four wounds. Then she does her actions, gets three back. Cool. All right. So next I will activate... Yeah, I'll activate my Chain Fist, who will switch to engage. Mm -hmm. And he will charge into... The Eviscerator? Yep. And even with the plus one, he's going to fail. So let me just double check. Yep, so he's charging in here. Yep. So I get plus one to hit, so I'm hitting on freeze. I've got close assault, so if I get two more hits, I can change a miss into a hit, and I have Rendy. So I get a crit, two crits and a hit. I'll change this one into a hit because of close assault, and Rendy changes to two crits. So you've got yep. four attacks hitting on fours. Yep. Uh, I get two crits. Um, I've got two crits and two misses. Um, you can only parry me with your crits. Yes. Uh, so so I, I crit... Um, I crit, you could parry, because you don't kill me in one hit. No. Um, so I will spend three on the attack. No, so we'll, we'll just spend three to turn... Um, you haven't got a successful... No, sorry, sorry, I haven't got a successful hit, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll spend one CP to reroll one of my misses. Okay. Into a hit. Okay. Um, 
Does it? No, the eviscerate doesn't have. It's brutal. Um, so now I'll spend three. Okay. To turn it into a crit. Cool. So I'll crit you for six damage. Uh, I'll crit you for six. And then I'll kill you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, no, I think because if I only had two, you could parry one and then kill me. Oh, no, because you could kill me anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, so I take five damage, right? Or six? Uh, six. Uh, you take six. So I've got two. And then left. I will um, glorious martyrdom. I thought you've already done it this turn. Oh, yes, she did it once yep. a turn, yeah. yeah. So she dies? She does die, yeah, that's me not thinking numbers through, right? Uh, this is your one? Yes. Yep, your turn. Yeah, so she's going to activate move behind here. Yep. And then she's going to shoot her crossbow at him who's in the open, because it doesn't go across any heavy. Yep. She's silent. It's Four dice on twos, is it? Uh, four dice on threes. Goes to fours. Um, but I have got a command point stratagem so she can reroll everything. Yep. So, uh, it's all fours. So you've got one crit, one crit so I take two is, more wounds. And it also gives it pierce. I've got three misses. Uh, her thing is one CP. Um, reroll any or all your attack dice. So yeah, we'll spend the one CP. Reroll the three misses. Yep. Into uh, another crit. Uh, so three misses, two crits and a hit. Cause, yep. Um, it's not lethal. So yeah, so it's take four more wounds. So I'm down to away, four. And then two crits and a hit with PS1, so you get two dice. Oops. And I block one and die. Yes, because it does uh, another six damage from the two crits. That's eight. eight. I think isn't going to get you into, yeah, you're going to just be out of any... Oh, no, uh, I am. Yeah, because you're this. Yeah. Um, so I activate my leader, who's just going to charge around the building. And fight there. Switching to engage. So hitting on threes or twos? Hitting on threes. Uh, so I've got two crits and a hit, but then because of close assault, that miss, because I've got two more successes. Yeah. Uh, three attacks on fours. I get two hits. Uh, so I'll crit you for six damage. I'll hit you for two. For two. And then I'll kill you. Yeah. Uh, so I've got seven wounds left on my leader, and then it's your turn. So we move around to here. Yep. And then, oh, is it actually range on it, is it? Uh, red. Is it red? Yep. So you can uh, give a plus one APL. It's actually blue. Oh. Um, That's... So I guess you could move around to tuck in there. Yeah. Because uh, I was just behind the wall. You do have a grenadier. So yeah, we'll get around to here. Yep. And yeah, we should be outside of two. Yeah, just make sure we're outside of two, because I've got a three-inch range on the ability. Yep. Uh, she should still be safe from most things, unless somebody goes right around here. Yep. Uh, yeah, so she should move around, and she's going to whip the her to give her plus two move and plus one APL for next turn. Cool. I'll activate the plasma. He's going to switch to engage. Mm -hmm. So I'll scramble move. I'll claim the point. Yeah. And then I'll overcharge my plasma into... Because uh, she, even though she's got a conceal order, there's... And then our blinding light. Uh, how many acts of faith is that? Two. Okay, so that gets refunded. So then and he will he's just... He's got no other target. And he's done a normal move. Yes. And then he... Yeah, he's done a normal move. He's done his claims. So he's got one APL that he could dash with. He'll just dash this way. Okay. Uh, so you've got no other watches because everyone's... Uh... Oh, yeah, because she's even though she's silent, yep. she's concealed. Uh, yes, because so the one was... person who did, you killed there. I activate my melter, who will switch to engage, move through the door to here, and shoot her. Yeah. So four dice hitting on fours. Uh, so I've got close assault. So you take four more wounds, and because I got four hits, you die. Yeah. I was hoping you would do like you did previously and fluff all your rolls. There was a chance. Um, but again, blinding light wouldn't have helped me versus him. So. Uh, and then I'll activate my Grenadier. He will switch to engage. Uh, he will move up to the scramble pile and throw his super crack at your lady. 
Mm -hmm. So there's four dice uh, hitting on freeze, just flat hitting on freeze. Uh, just two hits. AP one. Uh, so two saves. She actually has power armor, so she has three up saves. Yep. Uh, she fails both. Uh, so that's... Oops. Two hits, probably eight damage, which is probably going to kill her. I think it is. Uh, it is four six, so it does kill her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh my god. I should have probably just um, saved one for cover, but... Oh yes. You know what, on three up, I should have been able to save those. At least one of them. Uh, that's the end of the turning point. Yeah. Um, so, I have... Oh, I have six, sorry. Uh, six? What because did you score? That one. Oh, yes, yeah. Forgot to claim that one. Uh, so I'm on eight, you're on six. Uh, I've got nobody within range of the middle or the centre line. So then we're ready, everyone, on roll for initiative. Yeah. So three. we go. I go to three command points, you're on... One and three faith points. So we roll for initiative. I have a one. Ooh. I have a three. I assume so. you would like to go first. Yes, I will take the initiative. Um, so, um, uh, any strategic ploys from you? No strategic ploys from me. I am going to spend a command point to do brace for impact. So, unless until I move, charge, or fall back, I'm minus one damage. Yeah. Um, well, I take minus one damage. Uh, no, no, no strategy, no command strategies for me. And then I'll spend another command point for close assault. So yeah. down to one. Uh, anything from you? No. And then I'll do attack order. So I get to place this for free anywhere. Place it here. Yeah, they said Imperial Guards um, orders were busted. I know, right? Yeah. Plasma gun would have been out, I think, if you wanted to get the guy in here. So I don't think it's the center. No, everything's from the center of the token. No, it's just wild bull within blue of that token. Yeah, but John, then I could have a token that's three feet wide. I know, this is... Because there's no actual token, so everything should be measured to the center. Um, so I'll pop that one there. Anything from you? I, I said that, that was the same thing. No, not from me. That's that was the same thing with the foul show. It's like, oh, it doesn't say how big a foul show token is, or the, or the bird for the crew. And you're like, well, let's have this giant token flying around. So technically, there's tokens at the back of the core rule book. Yes, but there's no token for uh, uh, your attack order. Yeah, so, so they need to specify generic tokens. I, I think they did specify at one point that it's from the middle of the same as objective. It's from yeah. the middle. Uh, any attack ops oh, yes. are revealed? No. So at the end of the target reveal step. There's only one person on an objective, which is her. So if I kill her, I'll, I'll nominate her. So do you have thing. to kill her on the objective, or no. once you nominate her, yeah. you just double check that? So it is. Do, 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 do. Eliminate guards. Once you do so, uh, select an objective marker on the center line or within the opponent's territory, and then you select one of their operatives within white of it to be guard. Uh, if you. If you incapacitate them during the turning point, you get one victory point. You just have to, right, okay. Yep. So it doesn't matter if they're on it or not on it or whatever. Yep. You can't, yeah, because you can't perform a mission action twice in a turn, can you? No, no, no. You can do different mission actions. Yes, but I can't claim two points. Yeah, you can't, yeah. Um, yes. Um, so, yeah, so we'll um, activate the Patronus. Yep. Uh, use a free ability to claim yep. the mission action. Um, then we'll use her chalice to get me three more faith points, put me on six. Yep. Uh, and then she's going to move back over the wall. Yeah, my leader will switch to conceal. Mm hmm Claim this point. And just move up to here. Okay. So yeah, can activate the... Uh, gets her right round into there. Yep. Uh, stay concealed and pop the point. Cool. Such a dumb move, but it might work. So I'll, I'll blitz with these guys, so they aren't right. to the Melter Gunner and the Grenadier. Right, who's going first? Melter Gunner. He's already got an engage order. Yeah, yeah. so he's going to charge. Okay. Uh, so you've got five attacks. Two, three damage. Um, lethal five plus with stun. Ah, screw it. Yeah, so my Melter Gunner will just charge and fight you. Okay. Hitting you in combat, three dice, hitting on fours. Uh, two hits and a crit, two crits and a hit. Yep. Uh, I hit you on threes with lethal five plus. Yep. Uh, so I get two crits and a hit. Um, so my damage is three four. Yes. Um, you are going first though. Do I? I wanna... think I kill you because I rolled two crits. 
Because uh, you do four. I've got two crits as well, so I can parry a crit. No, yeah, 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 but the thing is, I'll hit with one crit and do four damage. Yeah. And then if you parry this crit, I'll hit you for free and kill you. Uh, hang on, where's the... Yeah, because if I... Yeah. Wait, well, hold on, let me check the melee weapon. Oh, I actually have gun butts. Oh, so, so what's your, your... Oh, dear. Uh, so I do three... T so I won't kill you, actually. You do two, three, yes. Yeah. He doesn't actually have a decent weapon. Yes. Um, so... The, oh, dear. Where did the core book go? There it is. I just want to double check stun because it's when I strike with a crit I can parry a hit, parry a hit I believe. Uh, yeah, first time you strike with a critical hit, select one of your opponent's normal hits from that combat to be discarded. Second time you strike with a critical hit, subtract one from the target's AP level. Oh, I see, I um, see. So, so, you're... Do I, so I've got, got these faith points, do I want to spend... I might as well spend two faith points to reroll the two misses. Okay. Uh, into another crit and a hit. So three crits, two hits. Uh, so you get to strike first. I'll crit you for three damage. Right. I will crit you I'll for that. Uh, three. Three. Yeah, I crit you for three, and, and I parry I'll, your hit. Yeah, and then I'll crit you for three. So you've got one wound left. And then I do another three, six, seven, Kill. eight. Uh, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See. And then this grenade launcher, uh, grenade will charge to here. Yeah. He just needs to roll a hit. Yes. Watches him fail to roll a hit. Oh no, he does. The same thing. So I, I ask you a question, yep. and I'll reveal Robin Ransack. So I get uh, one victory point now, and if he survives until the end of the game, I will get two. Um, he's got a pretty good chance of surviving to the end of the game. Yes. There's only one more turn. Yep. Um, right. Yeah, so we'll... Uh, so three, four... So we can go around that side of her. Yep. And shoot your guy behind the barricade. Yes. Um, four dice hit on fours. Do I want to spend... She's got two wounds, so I need to get two, two wounds. Which are guaranteed. But, oh, no, it's D3, it's isn't D3. it? Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll spend the two uh, to heal D3 wounds. Three. So he gets three back. So she's uninjured. She's back to five. Yep. Yeah, she's fine where she is. So she's just still going to just move that far. Yep. Uh, so she's going to fire her crossbow, which is four shots Hit on, on threes. threes. Um, so uh, you've got so two hits, two, two hits, misses. Two misses. Uh, you know what? We'll spend the command point to reroll those misses. Reroll the misses. Into a crit and a hit. So I he's does. now got PS1. Then, yeah, he's only had two wounds anyway. More wounds kill him. And yes, and two more wounds actually kill him before anything happens. Uh, so activate the plasma. He's going to switch to conceal. Mm -hmm. uh, pop the point. Or move and pop the point. Yeah, move and pop the point. Uh, then you have no overwatches. Uh, no, because nobody's engaged. So the comms will give that guy plus one APL. Yeah. And then I will flip and dash to there. Uh, how's he doing three things? Oh, no, yeah, so we'll just flip over, so... Yeah. And then uh, this guy will move around to here, claim the point, and dash to here. Yep. And then this guy will claim the point... Yep. ...and move up to here. So, I get two primary. Uh, yep. Some on ten. And it's ten-ten. Yep. Cool, so we're ready, everyone, and then roll for initiative. Uh, yep, because you've got one guy stopping me claim the middle. All right, so then we'll roll for turning point four. I have a six. Five. So I will go first. So I get three faith points. I'll go to two command points. I'll move attack order um, to here. Uh, anything from you? Uh, no, nothing from me, because I need to be engaged to use my activate people on objectives. Uh, then I'll do Blitz, I mean, close assault for... Nothing for me. And then, um, let's go, I'll do Brace for Impact again as well. Cool, nothing for me. Your first operative. Uh, Tac Ops, nothing to reveal. Nothing to reveal, so... So I'll nominate the lady on the point. That's the only one you can. <laughs> yes. I'll activate my leader... Uh, haven't you already scored two points on that? One. Because I didn't kill anyone. You, you did, you did it the first time and you just... Uh... Oh no, she didn't do her. Yeah, you yeah. ran away. Sorry, yeah. So, uh, I'll activate Breach and Clear on these two. Yep. So, I will scramble charge with my leader. So, my leader will switch to engage. 
Ooh, 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 ooh. Fight there. Yep. So hitting on freeze with close assault and attack order. So I've got a crit and a hit, and I've got two ones. Because I've got close assault, I'll change this one to a hit, and I'll reroll the one with attack order. Two crits and a hit. Uh, I got um, three attacks on four, three three damage. Uh, so I have a crit. Uh, there's no point me no. doing anything. So I'll parry and kill you. Yeah. So I get a point on my attack up again for eliminate guards. Because I mean, I could have spent a faith point to uh, reroll one, so then maybe you'd uh, have to parry one of my attacks. But so my guy will switch to engage. He'll move up to here and just shoot your uh, sniper. Because I'm within two. Yeah. So I've got four attacks hitting on freeze. Double hit. Double hit. Uh, so you've got three four-up saves. Uh, yes. Um, so one pass, two fails. Uh, you've got a crit. What, your, what's your damage on your shot? Three, three, three. Three, just three. Yep. Uh, so one of them. So I'll spend one point to reroll one of them. No, nope. and I'll spend two points to turn that to a save, but that's not going to do anything. I wouldn't because... spend it because I'll do six damage. Yeah, so I'm not going to... I needed the other one to Yeah, if through. that flipped, you would have... Yeah, if I got another save there, I could have saved three. Yep. Um, so she takes nine damage and dies. Yeah. Um, Glorious, Glorious Martin Martin isn't going to do anything, really. So no, because it's... It's going to give me face points, which I don't really need at the moment. Do one mortal wound to you. Yep. Um, Your turn. My turn. Uh, there's no more mission actions to do, um, but she can just move and dash behind the building out of sight. Yep. Uh, so I'll just move and dash to there. Move and dash to there. Oh, oh my gosh. And throw the battlefield across the yep. floor. Move on to centre line. And then move and dash onto centre line. So end of the turning point, I now have to reveal one of my other tac ops. So it's faction tac op uh, free into the Can't breach. Can't you only take one faction tac op? Yeah, I only picked one. Then so what was the one where you kill people? On... Eliminate guards. Oh, that's seek and destroy a seek and destroy one. Yeah, so it's one of the new seek and destroy ones. That's how I was like. So into the breach, you can reveal this at the end of the fourth turning point. If one or more friendly operatives that aren't the guy skull or the cat are within red of your opponent's kill zone, edge, you score one victory point. If you have two or more, you score another. So, why only one guy is within range red, of my kills on edge? Red. Oh, red of the kills on yeah, edge. Yeah. Sorry. So I've got three guys within red. Yeah. So I get two victory points. So I get one for Rob and Ransack, and then those two. And I think I added, I forgot to add one for my other attack up for eliminate guards. So it's 15 10. So yeah, you got two on eliminate guard, two on that one. What was your other one? Eliminate guard, Robin, Robin ransack, and then my faction tackle. So you got six from that, yeah. Yeah, because Robin, that's why I needed to do Robin ransack, because in case you ran away there, I needed to guarantee, because I have to kill in engagement range. Yeah. So there, end of the game, 15-10. Yes. So, but it was a good game. The only problem is, like, I think it just shows how dumb breaches are. So. Yeah, the, the, the guy skull, I've... It's so stupid. The guy skull flies over somewhere, and then it explodes. Yep. From a guy who can't see it, yep. can't see, and then he can be near a reroll ability yep. and get re-rolls, whereas everything else that does things like that doesn't benefit from re-rolls. Yes. Um, you also get 12 operatives for some reason. Um, Not even just that. Like the, th thing, the thing that annoys me is that damage in combat is 3-4 hitting on 4s, and then you combine it with close assault. Yeah, well that's the thing is you get close assault re-rolls. Uh, close assault is auto hits, attack oh, sorry, order so auto hits. You yeah. get uh, attack order re-rolls. Yep. Because you used to complain about Novitiates having the ability to automatically get whatever dice roll they want. Oh yeah, their, their things... Are, I didn't and, even do the crazy thing this yeah, game. But I think the breaches are even worse because yes. not even you have to go like, oh, I've got a finite pool of resources to spend. It's just, I spend two CP and suddenly everything is like, oh, I've rolled two hits, add a hit. Oh, I've, uh, I've, I'm within this range, which I need to be anyway because all my guns are only six inch range. Yes. Like, it's very silly. Like, the biggest thing was, I didn't even do Blitz this game. So the way Blitz works is, if you're the first operative to activate, uh, you get to retain a hit. And if you're the first friendly operative to do that action, you get to retain a crit. 
So my plan was turning point two to actually, if you had multiple people within range. Wait, if you're the first operative to activate, you get to retain it here. If you're the first friendly operative. Yeah, what? I know, to do that action and activate. So what you do is... But that, that still doesn't make sense because you will be the first friendly operative doing it. Yeah, but as long as you activate them first, <laughs> You will retain a crit, and then they've FAQ'd it, so it works if you hit multiple people, you retain multiple crits. Yeah. So you combine it with Close Assault, because it's Blast White. So you go with him uh, blue, and then all of a sudden, you are auto-hitting, auto-critting, hitting on freeze, probably with an attack order, and you basically murder someone, like if yeah. you're not prepared. There is no way you can prepare against that unless you space out like you did. Yeah, well, again, if you're not... Unless you can't space out because you've got like 12, 13, 14 operatives. Oh, yeah. Like, if, you, if you're not spacing out, you are just inviting any of the, like, blast attacks. Like, the, the thing about that grenade that annoys me, it's 4-6 and AP-1. It, it has a shorter range, slightly, but it's so dumb. So and I like, Yeah, I like, this is the thing. He's a better grenadier than pretty much all the other grenadiers that came before him. Yes. And he hasn't been nerfed like any of the other grenadiers. Uh, and it's like... It's uh, but, like the, the bloody grenadier is nearly as good. Or as good as No, his. the diabolic grenade is free free. No. Yeah. It has some mortal wounds, but it's... Well, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's on par, but not as good, because you get all of the re-rolls that the blooded guy doesn't yeah. get unless you make him a blood you give him a blooded token yeah. and then you've got like four blooded tokens but because of that extra command point i could basically blitz and brace for impact every t every turn after turning point one but also you activate two guys and yeah. suddenly one of the guys gets plus one apl yeah like and, you, ha and you have a comms guy to give plus one apl and it's like it's very weird breach and clear works on people that already have ga2 yeah because all of the other stuff like is pick a guy who isn't ga2 to, to become GA2, yes. or it only works on your GA2 models and you have to activate the GA2 models. So I think it's an oversight, but... Yeah, but well, we've, we've had a balanced state of slate, nothing's been changed, so yeah, breaches, no, are, I didn't breaches even... are still probably one of the top tier teams. Oh, they're the best. So I yeah. didn't even think they would... I thought on this board they'd be pretty balanced because of the openness, and I was like, oh no... no you just... say openness, there's enough heavy terrain between everything to block most lines of sight. Yes. Uh, there's only two vantage points. Again, those vantage points three. don't have... Sorry, three, yeah, yeah. But the middle one is very difficult to use. I um, think the problem is you had... You could have done there, but then the problem is... No, yeah, you could have given plus one APO, but you needed to get here. Right? Yeah. If I didn't claim that, then you could have left that. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I forced it was, your hand it was, I mean, I managed to score quite highly early on, but I just couldn't score the tack ops because you... Like, the, your getting the just getting the charge there if you hadn't had that charge yes. um i would have been probably fine for it oh yeah i thought i was out so i was just like oh i look like i'm out i, I thought you were i thought you were out as well but and then i just measured and i was like oh i'm actually just in just yeah because of your base i didn't but it was like that that changed the game i would say the most yes yeah because sure, i would have still had i would have had the middle on that i would have got at least one central control uh Possibly skew. No, I don't think so. I don't think I was on the center line. No. Yeah, skew center line is a weird one where you have to be on this center line. Which, hilariously, the bigger your base is, the easier it is to mm. accomplish. Which is just very weird. I think um, eliminate guards is actually very weird now. So I think it's actually probably best on this mission. Oh yeah, and any mission where you need to go and stay on point, it's fantastic because yeah. you you basically go, oh, which point do I pick a guy on? that I want to kill. Yeah, I, now I'm playing um, it more, I've actually gone like, if I was, if we were playing the other mission, I may not take it because li literally seize ground, you go like, oh, move away. Well, yeah, well, the problem is if you move away, then you could move up and take yeah, yeah. it back. So you, so it's you kind of have to leave people still near yeah. and on objectives unless you're being very aggressive. Yeah, so people are saying it's the best. I think it's good. It's a very strong one because your opponent has to put people on objectives. Yes. And you only have to get one person. So you just like, oh, that guy on that objective in the middle of the board who's really undefensible. Yeah, because I think turning point two was fine because you had multiple guys yeah. or ladies. Turning point four shows how broken it can be, where I just go like, oh, I'm activating first. Well, you only got one, you've got one person who is on an objective. Yeah. Um, and even if I was activating first, I, I can run them away, but if yeah. they die at any point during that turn... The runaway part is fine, but it's like the problem is it's a very dicey one. The thing is, if they run away 
and they still get shot at any point during that turn, yeah. they're still worth the point. Oh, it's still good. So but I don't think it's like a five out of five tack up that people are saying. Uh, it's, I'd say four. It's, it's pretty good. Well, depending on what the rest of them are, but like... Oh, Assassin um, is crazy. Uh, but I think overall, I mean, the Novitiates did... Like, the thing is the EMP actually probably changed the game. If that didn't go yeah, off... Yeah, if, if the guy got... Because the, the hilarious thing is technically, if I blinding lighted, the attack is technically coming from the operative who's doing the action. Yes, but you draw, you, you draw line of sight from... So you. So this is a weird thing. You measure line of sight and distances from the skull, but the guy doing the shooting for re-rolls is the gunner. Yeah, but so blinding light would work, because uh, until the animation, when the, that friendly operative is more than white from the enemy operative, so he's the enemy operative, so blinding light would technically work. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, like, the guy <laughs> skull is very confusing. he's not an operative, he's just being a marker. Yeah, I mean, I know how, like... I think rules is written currently. You're right. They'll probably change it to like the the. Because the thing is, you should you should need to be able to see the guy's skull. Yes. Because because the guy's skull can, or you shouldn't be able to use the fly move and the detonate move in the same turn. Well, so the funny thing is. Because that's the other thing that would fix it, not well, being able to use the fly and the detonate. Well, yeah. So the funny thing is, you can tell it was a problem in playtesting because they don't let you do it during turning point well, one. But the other thing is, in playtesting and playing on into the dark, yeah, it's not a problem because. You can't just fly across the interdark board. Well, so they so, said they did play test them on open boards, and that's why they made it. You yeah, can't do turning point one. Yeah, but turning point two, you just be like, yeah, you just do it again. Turning point two. Guy skulls over here, flies over here. My guy behind this building over here makes him explode. Yeah, so they it's probably like... didn't realize you could dash, then do, then brute and clear, yeah, you, then attack. You order. shouldn't be able to like. You shouldn't be able to move either. Not move the skull, or the skull can't explode and fly at the same turn. Yeah, um, it's it's. Not because then it was like, oh, the sky flow, the skull flow. But the problem is, the sky, the skull then flows over and you just kill it. But then you just move dash the skull instead. Yes. Um, well, it's like, so the only reason I took the skull was because it's crazy against four up saves. With yeah, it was, well, yeah, because lethal four plus is 50 50 on your yeah. dice, essentially. But with the attack order, it was dumb. Yeah, again, attack order shouldn't. There's a lot of stuff where I don't think they properly thought things through on certain things. Yeah. But... But I think overall, like, the sisters still sold power. If the EMP didn't go off, it probably would have been way, way closer. Also, all your guys just get an extra... Like, it's, it's your equipment point spend, but, I mean, what else do you spend your equipment points on? Yeah, there's on? nothing else to buy. Um, I mean, you can buy stun grenades, but I wouldn't, like... Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, you're, you're probably better off shooting somebody with a shotgun than you are throwing a stun grenade at them. It was like, so I was thinking, <laughs> oh, you know, maybe in the next balance day slate they'll be conservative with equipment point changes, but if they're doing one free to one I could see stims going to free. Yeah. Which would um, change. The I mean, thing is, gaining an extra wound is a massive thing. Yeah, it like... shouldn't have been an upgrade. It shouldn't have been equipment. Uh, but overall, I think it was... I mean, obviously you could see the power level difference. I could, can't deny that. But it's still a yeah. fun game. Like, like uh, where was it? Where was... The, I was, like, super worried turning point two when you got ahead on the primary. I was. Oh, like, yeah, because, like, well, turn, yeah, turn point one, I've got three, got three each. Turn point two, I was like, okay, well, I'll... Grab this extra one here, boy, because you didn't move an extra guy over here. Well, so the problem is I would have to or, throw in the melter, and then you would have just kill the melter. So I needed yeah. to keep the melter. Well, I, oh, it was, it was, it was over here. I got the extra APL, jumped yeah. over, and grabbed that one. Yeah. It's the same thing as you did over here when you went, yeah. okay, extra APL, move up. Yep. So I did the similar thing, went over, I've now got three, take that point. That gave me the four. Yeah, because my choice um, was either make this safe, but then the problem is that's still safe for you, and I'd rather this both be safe for us. Yeah. Because then it goes whoever it wins initiative, right? Here, it would just be like, it, it would be too even. I would prefer like whoever forces there into like, is in a bad position. Yeah, and also the, the, the extra APL on turn one, because otherwise I would have ran my chainsaw out and claimed it. Yes. Um, like, what, like, all you could have done turning point one differently is immediately give her plus one APL. Because yeah, then... Yeah, because well, then you would have to make the breach, then I run round, yeah. then you do the thing. Why well, so. I could have GA2'd it. Uh, yes, yeah, so you could have J2, the chainsaw walks up first, opens the door, then the yeah, other guy was, runs through. Unfortunately, there was no the way to stop that, Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. Um, <laughs> because you can just choose to activate any two guys together yes. at any point of the turn. So the weird thing, that would break their GA2. Yes. Yeah. Because, well, because it, it, well, no, no, it doesn't break their GA2. The because balance it now is makes, like it all does. No, 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 because it makes the chainsaw guy GA2, which means you can then activate him with another yeah. guy. Well, it's like, so the thing so is, because they... The, the, way they're, the way they're making it is they're making a reverse. Instead of making your GA2 guy become GA1 and activate with a person, you make one of your GA1 guys GA2. Yeah. 
and then he can be activated with a GA2 guy. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, overall, good battle report. I, I actually really enjoyed the new mission on Tac Ops. Like, yeah. even on both sides, like, I was really worried about central control and hold the central line. But then I was yeah. like, I can just... Even though it's kind of counterintuitive to run my guys onto the midline to stop it, I was like, actually, I have more you're bodies. But you're also probably going to be doing that anyway, because there's yeah. two objectives in the middle of the board. Yeah. Uh, you also have like this safe area here where you could have just ran. Like your oh, shotgun guy could have just ran behind here. Oh, I didn't want to do that because I of... didn't want to. But I mean, if you were at a point where you have a spare guy, you could always just get a guy in here where he's safe on the center line. Well, it's like so. If I didn't EMP that Pegasus and die, I was worried you because like the reason I was going to bunch oh, up here, move Dakadash, yeah, flame. Because your Pegasus would have just burned all of those. So uh, what well, they mean to torrent? Uh, they get a reroll dice. Oh, right. Yeah, but then you just. It's like I was worried about that because also then you would just send your sniper around this flank and just punish Well, them. I was hoping to maybe get her up here and maybe yeah. kill somebody. But the problem is once she got up here, there's no one she could really shoot still. Yeah. Um, and then it was okay. Well, she needs to be back here to try and help over here. Yep. But, but that's pretty much it. Thanks for yeah. playing, Charles. Remember, this was a patron requested battle report from my veterans of the crit. So please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment. Let us know what you thought of the battle report and the new missions attack ops. And I've got Discord you can check out in the episode description below as well as a Patreon if you want to give me some more support. And I'll quickly thank my Patreon. So for my adepts of the crit, I have Samari, Sam, Sam, Robin, Ninja Lee 83, Kenzie, John Thomas, Eric, Captain Murder, Dave, Daniel, Average Joe 27, and Adzik. And then for my veterans of the crit, I have Sam, just to thank you so much. Your support really helps a lot and support, improve the channel. But that's pretty much it. So until next time, remember. No matter what ways you can modify the dice, there's always a hope to win as long as you can roll a crit.